with you guys today we're talking about switching to linux after windows 10 that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video i'll go through some of the things to expect when you're switching over and some of the options you might have available to you if you're still on windows 10 right now and that's what we'll go through here and then we'll talk about installing linux and having a look at linux so first windows 10 end of life ends on october 14th uh, 2025 so I've broken this down into three groups of people. So there's people who can upgrade to Windows 11 and want to uh, upgrade to Windows 11. Now is the time to do that because obviously end of life is 14th of October 2025. You can install Windows 11 and get set up and get used to it. Also, there will be people who can upgrade to Windows 11 but just don't want to. We're going to be talking about some of the options available for you as well. And there will be a large number of people who can't upgrade to Windows 11 because of the unsupported hardware. Now, before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key keys, then check out the links in the video description and use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply that to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases. Once you submit your order, they will send you your key. You can use that key for upgrading from home versions to pro or activate your version of Windows. Let's go back to the video. So if you do stay on Windows 10, what are the options available to you? Well, first of all, after October 14th, 2025, you are not going to receive any more security updates. This means that this will put the computer at serious risk uh, not right away, but in the future, it will start to degrade over time. This means that any sort of security vulnerabilities will not be bothered to be patched by Microsoft because the operating system has reached end of life. Next thing to consider is if you've got an antivirus program, a lot of people believe that when you install an antivirus program, it's going to make you safe. Unfortunately, if Microsoft do not update uh, their operating system, it just means it's not going to protect you the way you think it is because those vulnerabilities are holes in the operating system that cannot be patched. And even an antivirus program is not going to stop those exploits. Now, there is an option to extend security updates, which is what Microsoft are planning to roll out. This is a $30 fee for one year, which will give you another year at least with your old computer to continue to use it. This is an option available to you. There's also other options out there like LTSE versions, which you can purchase, but I'm not gonna go through that in this particular video because I wanna keep this as simple as possible and talk about options available. Now, what about people that wanna go offline? Well, that is an option available to you. You can completely remove the ethernet cable and Wi-Fi from uh, the computer and continue to use that computer for as long as you like because you're not connected to the internet. Let's talk about Linux. So if you want to use another operating system, Linux is an option that you can use. This is a uh, Linux Mint. It's free to use. It's open source. It will work with your old hardware. And uh, basically, once you get it installed on your computer, you'll receive security updates and also you'll get feature updates for this particular operating system as well from Linux. It's open source. And again, it will have different learning curve to Windows, but it is an option which is out there for you, which will give your old computer a new lease of life. The thing you need to understand with Linux is there's differences between Linux and Windows because obviously they're two different operating systems. So if there is certain requirements that you need, from Windows, then you need to understand when you go over to Linux, some of those requirements might go away because Linux might not run with those particular uh, software. For instance, Microsoft Office. If you downloaded Microsoft Office and put it onto your Windows computer and you use it, it's not going to work that way on Linux. You can't install that software on Linux. And there's a lot of other software that does exactly the same thing. You can use the Office Online suite like this and basically use it online, but you will not be able to download and install Microsoft Office on a Linux-based system. It's just not going to work. So we'll go through some of that stuff in a second when we install Zorin, because I think I want to show you how to install Zorin, and then we're basically going to uh, get it all set up 
And what we'll do is I'll go through some of the software options available and what the differences are between this and Windows. So let's go ahead and download this. And what we're going to do is create our bootable media and we're going to boot to it and install it. So Zorin OS 17.3 core, you can download that. It's free to download, as you can see here. Now, because Microsoft have stopped their updates for Windows, Linux will continue to update that operating system. And that means that old piece of hardware that you're using or that old computer you're using will still be okay to use. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is download Etcher here. Uh, you can use uh, Rufus or whatever other software you want to use. And we're going to create a bootable uh, USB flash drive with Zorin OS on it. So let's go ahead and choose the ISO that we just downloaded here. And what we'll do is we're going to click, choose our uh, USB flash drive and then flash. And that should be done in no time at all. Once that's done, you can boot to that USB flash drive by changing the boot order in your uh, BIOS uh, to boot to that USB flash drive. I'm pretty sure you know how to do that right now. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try a Zorin OS and it should look something like this when you're loading it up. And once we get this loaded up, we can then go through the install process and we can take a look at it and we'll, I'll go through some of the options available to you and some of the things that you can do and some of the things you can't do. So when you get to this page here, you can try Zorin OS if you want to, but we're going to go ahead and click on install Zorin OS. And now we're going to go ahead and choose our keyboard layout. You can choose whatever one you want, depending on where you are in the world. So we're going to go ahead and choose the UK and we're going to go ahead and click continue. So let's go ahead and do that. And from here, we're going to download updates while installing Zorin OS. And we're also going to install third party software uh, for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and stuff like that. And you can see here already that there is a don't participate in census. This census lets Zorin OS developers count on the number of users anonymously. So again, a little bit of telemetry there, but nothing to write home about. You can just check mark that and tell it you're not interested in it and they'll leave you alone. Unlike Windows, where they will just keep harvesting all your information, whether you like it or not. So let's go ahead now. And what we're going to do is erase the disk and install Zorin OS onto our drive. Now, this only has one drive on it, but again, yours might have different drives or it might have, uh, you know, different partitions. If that's the case and you've got data on there and it was all to do with Windows, you might want to back all that data up. And of course, then you can wipe the drive completely clean. So we're going to go ahead and select continue here to continue to install. And once we've done this, we can choose our location. I'm in London, so let's go ahead and do that. Now you need to give yourself a name. So let's call it Brightech here. There we go. You can give yourself a password. Make sure it's a strong password. So let's go ahead and type something out here so I can quickly get started. And once you've done this, you can click on continue. And this will then continue with the installation process. I'll speed this part up, but it just basically installs Linux. Let's click uh, restart now and restart the PC. Once it restarts, it's going to ask you to remove the media, which is your USB flash drive, and then press enter. And then we can sign into our account and we can get straight to the desktop. And there we go, we're at the desktop. Okay, so here we have Zorin OS installed on the system. And as you can see, the start menu looks very similar to something you would get on Windows. You've got all your icons here for Office and other things on the side. So if you do use, say, Microsoft Office installed on your old Windows system, you're not going to be able to use that. But you can use something like LibreOffice that works just as well. Now, when it comes to software, you are going to have to make some adjustments because whether you like it or not, Windows uh, software just does not always work on Linux. There might be a particular type of software that you use on Windows that just doesn't work on Linux. For instance, Microsoft Office Suite does not work. Uh, things like Camtasia Studio does not work on here. Adobe uh, Suite does not work on, on here either. So you just have to accept the fact that um, you're going to have to adapt and use the software that is available to you on a Linux platform. And what you can do here is it does have very good software. It's all open source and free to use a lot of this software. But let's just say you like to use Photoshop. In this case, you can't use Photoshop on Linux. You're going to have to adapt and use something like this software here called GIMP. 
download it and install it on the system. And again, this will act in the same way as Photoshop, or you can use, uh, you know, some of the online ones that are very similar to Photoshop and they're online as well. But you can't use anything like Adobe Suite on actual Linux itself. It just doesn't install. But this is where you can do all your photo edits and things like that. Uh, again, it's just an uh, adjustment that you're going to have to make if you are making that transition from Windows 10 to uh, Linux. For your modeling and animation and rig and stuff like that, you can see right here we've got Blender. This works perfectly fine on Linux. And again, you can get this installed and up and running all on your versions of Linux. It works perfectly fine. So let's come down and take a look at some of the other options that you might be looking at. For instance, you might need some sort of digital painting or painting software. You can use this one right here. It works very, very well. And again, you can do some really nice uh, drawings on this particular software. It's completely free. And again, it's not the same as Windows, but you are going to make that adjustment. OBS Studio does work on here. So if you've used that on Windows, you can use it on here. Inkscape, the same sort of thing. You can use this. This is for your vector graphics editing and things like that. Free and open source. You can use that and install it on your operating system. Let's have a quick look at OBS Studio. I'm pretty sure you've used this before. This does work on Linux. You can't use programs like Camtasia and things like that on Linux because it just doesn't work. There's other software like Adobe uh, software on here, like video editing software. It just does not work on here. Adobe Editions, all that sort of stuff will not work. So you're just going to have to find alternatives. Simple screen recorder. Again, you can use this as a simple screen recording, which will record your desktop screen. If you need something like that, you can use that program as well. And again, we're going to come down and take a look at some other options that you might need if you are using uh, an operating system like this. Audacity, if you like to manipulate audio files, then you can use Audacity. That also works on Windows. It also works on Linux. And again, we've got Blender here. Uh, this is the 3D modeling part. We've already gone through that. Let's come down a bit further and take a look at some of the other options. Now, I'm not 100% sure what type of video editing software works on here, but this one works very well on Linux and it is a video editing software. So if you're used to using Adobe Video Editing Suite, you're not going to be able to use that. You're going to have to use something else instead of that particular type of software because it just won't work. So again, these are all options available. So we've covered pretty much all of the software that you would use on a Windows-based system, and you can use it on Linux. Now, for your browsing options, you're pretty much sport for choice. You've got Chrome, you've got Chrome, Chromium Web Browser. You've also got some other ones on here that you can use as well, like Firefox, Brave, and things like that. Same old uh, sort of deal you would get on Windows. So that doesn't really affect you too much. What about your emails? Well, you could use Gmail if you wanted to. You could still use that or you can use a client. For instance, if you wanted to use, say, Thunderbird or something like that, you could use uh, something along those lines because obviously Outlook just does not work on, on this particular operating system. So you're going to have to use other clients. There is plenty of decent ones out there like Thunderbird, Betterbird, and plenty of others that you can use. And these are very capable email clients if you need an email client onto your operating system again this is a complete different operating system a different challenge to you and you could just click on these and install them onto the system so what about gaming because i know people are going to say that in the comments section yes if you are a, a really hardcore gamer and you play some really triple uh, a listed games some of those games just do not work on linux unfortunately and you're not going to be able to play those games. So maybe Linux isn't for you, but there is something out there. There is options available for gaming on Linux. It's just not as good as Windows when it comes to all of the games, because obviously Windows has the best platform for gaming, but it's getting better for Linux users uh, to be able to play games on this platform. So you can see this might be a viable option to you. Again, I've made videos previously on some of this topic, so go and watch some of those. But again, Linux is an option for you if you haven't got the money to buy a brand new computer or even upgrade your old computer, or if you don't want to upgrade to Windows 11 whatsoever, Linux might be an option for you. So if you're looking to surf the web, do a bit of email, you can get away with all that on Linux. 
It's just you might have to change some of your software choices. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.